Do I say the word apocrypha weird? Apocrypha. Apocrypha. Hello friends, I'm Tim Wildsmith, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the ESV Apocrypha from Cambridge University Press. Okay, this is something new from Cambridge University Press, the ESV Apocrypha. To be quite honest with you, I was excited to check this out because I've not spent very much time with the Apocrypha. And actually, every time I say the word Apocrypha, I think, am I saying that right? Um, and every time I try to spell the word Apocrypha, I think, is that right? That doesn't look right. Um, <laughs> I grew up in a, an evangelical tradition here in the U.S. where we did not use the Apocrypha. We didn't read from it. It wasn't in our Bibles. I just didn't know much about it, but there are Christian traditions that use the Apocrypha. It may not be part of the uh, canonized Bible. You often hear the word deuterocanonical when referring to these books, um, but it's something that people use in liturgy. It's something people to use to study for the history of it, um, and so I'm excited to, to spend some more time with this and take a look at it. From what I see so far, it looks really nice. It's well laid out, and what I really like about it is that it's in the ESV translation. The ESV, the English Standard Version, has become one of the most popular translations in the world over the past 20 years since it came out in 2001. And back in 2008, I believe it was, Oxford University Press did the original translation of the ESV Apocrypha. And now we have this edition, hardcover, really inexpensive, looks great from Cambridge. And so it's, it's a great tool, and it's a great way to check out the Apocrypha if you've never done that. So before we dive in, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more Bible videos like this. And uh, yeah, let's take a look. It's the ESV Apocrypha from Cambridge University Press. Okay, starting with a look at the ESV Apocrypha from the outside. Nice hardcover edition. It's about six and a quarter inches wide by nine and a quarter inches tall. And it's just over a half inch thick. There you see on the spine it says Apocrypha, English Standard Version in Cambridge. You've seen the front cover. And then you get back to the back cover. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Now I think, I think I saw one of the ladies from Cambridge, it might have been Amanda, comment to someone on Facebook that there were gonna be other editions of this, perhaps more expensive editions, uh, more premium bindings. I think I saw that, I could be wrong, so don't hold me to that. But right now, good hardcover edition, it's not expensive. I'll put some links to prices and things like that for it. I was pleased to note on the inside that this was printed and bound by Lego in Italy. Great spot. There you see the note about the design, the typesetting, the copyright date here in 2021. There you see right there that the original ESV Apocrypha was published by Oxford University Press. So some competition there between Cambridge and Oxford back in 2009. I believe that was actually 2008, but the copyright says 2009. And then uh, this one, the one that the edition used here is a 2017 by Crossway. So that's the text used here. Um, you often see different orderings of these books, so here's how it's ordered in this edition. I believe that what's going on here is that they do have Psalm 151 as well as 3rd and 4th Maccabees, so that matches the RSV from the 1970s. I think that was 1977. Yeah, 1977. And other than that, everything matches uh, the Latin Vulgate and the Greek Septuagint. There's, there's notes about all of that here in the preface that you can read about. Um, which books are there and the textual basis and things like that. So then you get into the text, starting with Tobit. Really nice, nine and a half point font, line matched. It seems to be spaced really generously. I think the note said that it was a ten and a half point uh, spacing there, so it, it really feels good. You get the textual notes at the bottom of each column of text. I like those those numbers. The chapter numbers seem pretty modern, but it's a really easy, comfortable font to read. You notice that you can sort of just kind of see a little bit of text on the other side of the page, but it's not distracting at all. I don't know what the GSM of this paper is, but it feels pretty good. It's it's somewhere between a typical Bible paper and like the paper you'd see in a novel. So it's very thick. It's really nice. I, I imagine you can write on this if you want to, but um, overall, I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward. This is what it looks like all the way throughout. It's black letter text. Um, you get some poetic type settings, poetic settings here when it's po poetry looks really sharp. I mean, again, not a lot to it. Nine and a half point font, notes at the bottom. It's pretty simple, but I'll just pull this up here so you can kind of see it. Looks good. 
I love the history that you find in the books, first through fourth Maccabees. It's really interesting to read. I've started reading some of this, and it's been really interesting. Um, and then at the end... We get a little section of maps. What you often get with an apocrypha is maps that um, tell you more about the time when this was written, which is kind of between the Old Testament books and the New Testament books. You see here things about Alexander the Great, and that's cool, the, the Greek Empire. So the temple during the time of the Maccabees. Yeah, really interesting. Flip back here, take a look at some of this stuff while you're reading through some blank pages in the back. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, looks good, feels like it's really well made. The typesetting, the print, it looks sharp on the page. I mean, great book to put on your bookshelf and grab it when you want to read some of these books or refer to something out of here. Looks really sharp. So there you have it. It's the ESV Apocrypha from Cambridge University Press. I'll put some more details in the description so we can learn more about this, see links to where you can purchase it. I'll also put all of that at BibleReviewBlog.com where I've got a write-up of this, where I've got uh, more links to purchase, photos, things like that. You can check it all out on the website. Definitely check out Bible Review Blog on Instagram and Facebook. We've got a great community out there that you want to be a part of. And while you're here on YouTube, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. My goal is to help people find a Bible that's right for them because I'm convinced that when you do that, you're going to want to spend time with it. And then when you spend time with it, it's going to change your life. You're going to become closer to Jesus. And that's what it's all about. So thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. <music>